Have you ever heard of a man who always escapes death? A womanizer. A man who went from a small boy in a Siberian village to Russia's most influential person in history. Today, we'll uncover the secrets of Rasputin. In the small Siberian village of Pokrovskaya, born on January 21st, 1869, Grigory Yefimovich Rasputin came into the world as the son of a peasant family. From the beginning, his life was marked by strangeness and controversy. As a child, Rasputin was known to have visions and exhibited behaviors that were considered unusual by the villagers. His education was minimal, and he grew up illiterate, a fact that did not deter him from later claiming a special connection with the divine. Rasputin Rasputin's life took a significant turn when he went on a pilgrimage to the St. Nicholas Monastery at Verkhodarya in 1897. This journey was a pivotal moment, marking the beginning of his transformation into a self-proclaimed holy man. He claimed to have experienced a religious awakening, one that granted him healing powers and a direct line to God. Upon returning to his village, Rasputin's reputation as a healer and mystic began to spread, attracting followers and detractors alike. By 1903, Rasputin had made his way to the city of St. Petersburg, the heart of the Russian Empire. It was here that he would rise to unprecedented levels of influence, ultimately becoming one of the most powerful figures in the court of Tsar Nicholas II. His introduction to the royal family came through several high-ranking members of the Russian Orthodox Church who believed in his abilities as a mystic and healer. Rasputin's chance to prove his worth came when the young Tsarevich, Alexei, the heir to the throne, fell gravely ill with hemophilia. Desperate to save their son, Nicholas II and his wife, Tsarina Alexandra, Kendra, turned to Rasputin for help. Rasputin's success in alleviating Alexei's suffering, whether through mystical means or psychological comfort, earned him the unwavering trust and gratitude of the Tsarina. She became his staunchest supporter, convinced that he was a man sent by God to save her family. This close relationship with the royal family granted Rasputin unprecedented access to the inner workings of the Russian government, where he began to wield significant influence. Some believe that Rasputin's advice to stop administering aspirin, which worsened bleeding, might have contributed to Alexei's improved condition. Before Rasputin's influence reached the royal court, he had already built a considerable following. He famously said his reputation as a healer and spiritual guide spread among the people, particularly among women. Rasputin had an undeniable charisma that drew many to him, and he used his charm to form intimate relationships with numerous women. His followers included women from various social standings, but it was his involvement with the wives of noblemen that caused the most scandal. Rasputin's bizarre and revolting behavior significantly contributed to his notorious reputation. He rarely bathed, wore the same dirty clothes for weeks, and often had food stuck in his long, unkempt beard. His dining habits were particularly appalling as he ate with his hands, licked his fingers before serving others, and dipped his filthy fingers into shared dishes. Despite his repulsive appearance and crude manners, Rasputin's unsettling charisma captivated many, especially women. Rasputin's relationships with these women often included bizarre and secretive rituals. He believed that sinning and then repenting brought one closer to God, and he encouraged his followers to partake in these activities. Rasputin would hold private gatherings where he claimed to purify women through sexual acts, convincing them that these rituals were necessary for their spiritual well-being. His hypnotic presence and persuasive words led many women to succumb to his influence, believing in his supposed divine connection. He tested their loyalty in bizarre ways, like having them lick jam from his dirty fingers, and openly boasted about his sexual conquests, including claims about Tsarina Alexandra. His obscene public gestures and boastful claims only fueled the resentment and conspiracy against him among the Russian nobility. Despite the mounting opposition, Rasputin's hold over the royal family remained unshaken. He used his influence to interfere in political matters, often appointing and dismissing ministers based on his whims. His meddling in state affairs during a time of great turmoil for Russia, including the disastrous involvement in World War I, only served to deepen the crisis. As the country descended into chaos, Rasputin's presence presence became a symbol of the corruption and incompetence that plagued the Russian monarchy. Rasputin's numerous enemies plotted to end his influence permanently. One infamous attempt on his life occurred in 1914 when a peasant woman named Kionia Guseva attacked him with a knife 
severely injuring him. Rasputin survived the assassination attempt, furthering the belief in his supernatural resilience. However, his survival only intensified the determination of those who sought to eliminate him. One of the most notable of his lovers was the wife of Prince Felix Yusupov. Yusupov's wife, Irina, was among many noble women who fell under Rasputin's spell. Seeing this, Prince Felix Yusupov, Grand Duke Dmitry Pavlovich, and the right-wing politician Vladimir Perishkovich made the final plot to kill Rasputin. On the night of December 29, 1916, Rasputin was invited to Yusupov's palaces under the pretense of meeting his beautiful wife, Irina. The conspirators had prepared a deadly combination of cyanide-laced cakes and wine, confident that the poison would quickly do its work. To their astonishment, Rasputin consumed the poison treats without any apparent effect. Desperate to end his life, Yusupov retrieved a revolver and shot Rasputin multiple times. Believing him to be dead, the conspirators briefly left the scene, only to return and find Rasputin still alive, attempting to escape. In a final act of brutality, they shot him again, beat him, and wrapped his body in a carpet before dumping it into the icy Neva River. The post-mortem examination revealed water in Rasputin's lungs, suggesting he was still alive when thrown into the river, lending an eerie credence to his reputation for supernatural endurance. Rasputin's death did not bring the stability his assassins had hoped for. Instead, it marked the beginning of the end for the Romanov dynasty. The Russian Revolution soon followed, leading to the execution of Tsar Nicholas II and his family, and the rise of the Soviet Union. Rasputin foresaw that he would either be killed by commoners or by the nobility. He warned Nicholas that if the common people were responsible for his death, the Tsar's family would continue to rule Russia for centuries. However, if the nobility were to kill him, it would signal the end of the Romanov dynasty, which is exactly what transpired. Rasputin's journey from a peasant in Siberia to the most influential man in the Russian Empire with his extraordinary ability to captivate and control. He was the most weird and controversial man of all time. If you like watching just crime and history documentaries, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our other videos. And check this left video to explore more about history and crimes.